Hey, cuties. Let's talk about what? Uh, excuse me? Death. Death to all of them. <laughs> hey, friends. How are we doing? Today, we're going to be chatting about the book talk books I actually like. I wanted to chat about this, right? Because I'm from, like, <laughs> on Booktuber, but, like... <laughs> To book talk, you know what I mean? She's like the new girl who got really popular, and we're like, huh, have to earn your stripes. I personally don't really let myself have TikTok for very long. I constantly delete it on and off my phone. Not constantly delete it on and off my phone. I more often than not don't have it on my phone, but I do go on there occasionally throughout the years. <laughs> I've been on there. But yeah, I'm very interested by book talk's phenomenon. I feel like in some ways, with my love of memes, I'm actually perfectly suited to making TikToks, but I'm scared. And I think what scares me off of it more than anything is not the creation side of it, but is how my perception of it whenever I've had it is it is quite a niche selection of books that they're promoting and everyone's reading and Girl, the shade, the shade of it all. Whereas I feel like booktube has a much vaster, quick turnover of the books people are recommending, a lot of more difference, but I feel like there are books that get popular on booktube, but I feel like it's a lot more variety. I also feel like, let's just sit down and have a chat quickly about Colleen Hoover. <laughs> I've never read Colleen Hoover, so I can't really give an assumption. I've only heard people describe the plot. I, what was that? Okay. <laughs> I wanted to make this video because there are some books from Book Talk that I've loved, that I've really, really loved, and so I want to chat all about them. But I guess the perception is Book Talk doesn't recommend good books. And for me, the main problem is Colleen Hoover, right? No shade if you read Colleen Hoover and loved it. Um, but I feel like they're adult books, is my understanding of it, and teenagers are reading them as if they're YA books. And just with some of the, you know, what I've heard on the grapevine, what the plots are about, I'm like, girl. Maybe not. <laughs> I think if, if you're an adult, you can perhaps separate the subject matter from what is healthy or not healthy, but I do worry about teenagers reading, uh, you know, Colin Hoover and thinking that those relationships are like normal, healthy relationships. From my understanding, they're not. I mean, again, I haven't read the books. I've seen two influencers, actually, that I follow on Instagram recently start reading for the first time, I think, because of TikTok, and it's all like Colleen Hoover, a bit of Emily Henry as well. <laughs> But anyway, let's chat about the books that BookTok has recommended that I actually want to give my stamp of approval. Firstly is The Love Hypothesis by Ellie Hazelwood. I remember the main version has that, that sticker on it. Not the sticker, it's a sticker you can't take off. The TikTok sensation. Honestly, those like stickers you can't take off, Warzone. Warzone. We're in the trenches, like... This was big around the time that it came out on BookTok. And this is the best romance I've ever read. If you want a good romance, read this. Read this. Like, I'm like, I'm like, to the people who are reading Colin Hoover, who I follow on Instagram, who obviously got it from TikTok. This, yeah, it just, I mean, Ellie Hayes would just get it. In this, we're following two characters. One who's like a science research student. One who's like kind of the teacher, but it's not like, he's not her teacher, the, 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 you know. The, the, the dynamics aren't bad. They're not bad. When you say student teach, you think, oh shit. But like, if they're at university, master, I don't, I don't understand all the science terminologies. PhD, I don't know. Don't know what they're doing. And they fake date and they fall in love. And it's just like, mm, Ellie Hayeswood, it's hot. I think I love Grump Sunshine. I think all of my favorite romances I've ever read are Grump Sunshine. Perhaps, I don't know if it mirrors my relationship. I don't think it like, I don't think to the same degree, but yeah, we are, me and Tom are a bit Grump Sunshine, perhaps. <laughs> So maybe that's why I like it in romances. I just thought it was so well written. I could not stop reading it. I had the best time reading it. The resolution at the end, like, you know, all romances have that kind of like third act conflict. And I didn't feel like it was too much. I feel like it was understandable. Some third act conflicts like, girl, get it together, just communicate. But with this one, you could really understand the miscommunication and the conflict. And I feel like it was resolved so well. And yeah, TikTok was on, on their shit on this one. They got it, they got it, they got it. And I'm glad that it got the success it did from TikTok because it deserved it. Next is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I feel like I don't talk about this book a lot. I actually gave this five stars. I did a whole reading vlog for it when it came out. We're following Addie LaRue who makes a deal with the devil essentially and uh, what is in the synopsis? <laughs> stop while you're, stop while you're ahead. 
Okay. She can live eternally, but she can leave no trace of herself. No one remembers her, any trace of her disappears. And it's kind of, we flick back in time between her in her kind of early days living this life and her now meeting Henry. Henry, oh my God, I forgot about Henry. Henry, Henry. <laughs> This is up there as one of my favourite V.E. Schwab's I've ever read. I just thought this was beautifully written. You could tell it was a book that V.E. Schwab had really like loved and given so much love and care and attention to. I do love the books that take authors a long time to write. I mean, I know that's not great for the coin, but like when I think of people like Erin Morganson who put out, Donna Tart, who put out like books every 10 years, <laughs> I do love the kind of depth, it feels like a really like deep tapestry, um, these books. So yeah, I really loved it. It made me sob. You know, there are critiques of this, the fact that Ali Rue lives for 300 years and like literally stays on Europe and America, like girl. <laughs> That's suspicious. So I think there are valid critiques of it, but I think this is one of my favorite endings to a book. It was very beautiful. And again, I think it very much deserves the hype. Wow, this like, I love talking about books that I read a little while ago because it just takes me back to certain vibes that I am like recapturing in my life right now. If you've never watched me before, you're like, girl, keep on talking. Anyways, <laughs> next we have, in my opinion, one of the most deserving of the hype books. This is always a book recommendation I give to people who don't read a lot. If someone says to me, like, in my life, I want to get into reading, this is the book I hand them without a doubt. And it's Seven Husbands that Evelyn Hugo. I feel like the normies love her. <laughs> you know, Taylor Jenkins Reid is one of my favourite authors ever. One of the very few, I think there's like three authors who I've read like three books from, for example, and they've all been five stars. Like every book I read from her is five stars. And I feel like this is perhaps the best place to start. Uh, this is a very, I really loved this copy. She like went through it a bit. She's like, girl, what were you doing to me? Anyway, so many of you all know this story. We're following Evelyn Hugo, who's this Hollywood starlet from, I think from like the 1950s-ish into like the 70s, 80s, 90s, present day. And we talk about the seven husbands that she had in her life and who was the true love of her life. And I just think it's, I mean, it's just a good book, isn't it? It's just a good book. It's just a good book. Taylor Jenkins really is doing this very cool thing at the moment where all of her books are like advancing 10 years. This is like, I would say mainly 60s. Daisy Jones is 70s, Malibu Rising is 80s, and then Carrie Soto, the next one that's coming out, is 90s. Now, Taylor Jenkins read, do not go back in time to like the 1920s. Give us a noughties book. I will keep saying it. Give us a book set in the noughties. Lindsay Lohan, Paris Hilton, Britney Spears era. How much do I have to ask? How much do I have to ask for it? If she's not writing that, if she's not literally at this moment sitting there writing that at her computer, I am so powerful. My mind, oh, it amazes me sometimes. I might actually like email her. I'm like, Taylor, please, whatever you're writing for your 2000s book, it has to be this. <laughs> So anyways, yeah, I just think this has got beautiful writing, beautiful storytelling, made me cry once again. TikTok like books that make them cry. And I, I respect that because I cry a lot of books. I definitely do want to reread this soon. I also want to reread Daisy Jones because it's been a long time. I mean, this is, I, I read this before I had my channel. So it's been more than three years since I read this. And um, I love it very much. Next is one that I actually can't believe is really popular on BookTok. Like I would not expect this to be. And it's A Good Guide to Murder by Ho Jackson. One of my favorite murder mysteries, probably my favorite YA murder mystery series ever. We're following Pip who, uh, you know, is doing this school report and she is investigating the disappearance of a girl from her small town. And her boyfriend supposedly admitted to murdering her, but Pip doesn't think that is the case. It is mixed media. We've got interviews, we've got maps, we've got production logs. Oh, it's so good. I just think this is the perfect YA murder mystery. It's so much fun. It has so many like twists and turns. Taking you on the investigation with her is just so much fun. So yeah, I can't believe this is popular. I wouldn't really expect it, but I am so glad it was. Next is my love, my pride and joy, Heartstopper. I am so, I just love the love of Heartstopper. As many of you know, if you're regular here, this is my favorite favorite graphic novel series of all time. It has been since the moment I read it. It was the first graphic novel I ever read, probably, yeah, coming up to two and a half years ago now. And... You may say I'm a dreamer. I only watched the show once all the way through. I did love the show, but it doesn't have, I don't have the same feelings towards it like I do this. Like, I love them. I love that. It's just the way Alice Oseman 
draws their faces. Like, I don't even know if you can see. Oh my god. Hold up. Nick Nelson, excuse me! Boy meets boy, boys become friends, boys fall in love. That's what it says on the back, that's all you need to know. And I am just so glad that Heartstopper has got the love and attention and support that it has. It makes me so happy and I think there is nothing more deserving than these boys. Oh, Alice Oseman. God, best graphic novel ever. Then we have The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This was a super popular book talk book and I love this. <laughs> this is the story of Linus Baker who works at the department in charge of magical youth and he goes to one of the orphanages and there's like magical children there and it's a story of him like falling in love with the owner of the orphanage and seeing the kids grow and develop and it's just a very beautiful, lovely book. It makes me want to read more cozy fantasy. If you guys have any cozy fantasy recommendations, please let me know. I haven't read any books similar other than Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. TJ Klune is kind of a, with these books, like in a league of his own, I feel like. I would love any recommendations you feel gets close to this, but the warmth and the like message for life that is in these books. I love Under the Whispering Door as well. I don't know if I actually, no, I don't prefer Under the Whispering Door, but Under the Whispering Door, I prefer the message and the hope. I really feel like that's very special. Under, Under the Whispering Door is about grief and loss and death. Uh, and coming to terms with death and I think I read that at a time when I really needed that whereas this one I just loved the writing I loved being in this world I I just I it's very it's very special I have not read another book like it so I would love any recommendations that you guys have then we have one that I feel like has gotten popular quite recently on TikTok and that is Before the Coffee Gets Cold I really did like this now I think my understanding is BookTok loves this because it makes them cry. <laughs> this is kind of four short stories set at this coffee shop where if you go there and you drink coffee, you can like time travel, but I think it's to only another time in the shop and you have to come back before the coffee gets cold. And I'm not gonna lie, I did cry quite a bit in this. <laughs> Every day I wake up. <laughs> if you're looking, you know, for a book to make you cry, I would recommend this. And then my final one is Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. Again, I think perhaps this is so popular because it's had that Netflix adaptation. Crooked Kingdom, I always say, is my favorite of these two. I love it, but I love these characters. I think Lee Bardugo is always one of my favorite authors to hear talk about how she writes because she gets it. She gets what the people want. And I just find that so interesting. Even Ninth House, which was not universally popular, I I just think she's so interesting. And just the cast of characters she's created here is something if I ever write a book, I hope to kind of implement how these characters all bring such interesting, unique dynamics to the table. Sometimes when I read a book which has a large group of friends, they like either all very, all very similar, which is kind of boring, or they all have like a kind of stereotype that they're encapsulating, but they don't have much depth to them. Whereas I feel like all of the characters in this book have so much depth to them. The world building, the vibe, the plot oh my god twists and turns I forgot like this book really keeps you in the dark which I love I love when they're making plots and plans the reader does not get all the information you get kept in the dark and then something happens and you're like I forgot how to breathe I forgot how to breathe <laughs> I love this I'm very excited I'm reading a uh, king of scars uh, not next book, the book after. And I'm excited, but I'm scared. I'm hoping it's gonna give me the vibes of this rather than Shadow and Bone, but we shall see. So there we have it. Those are the popular book talk books that I love as well. And I give my stamp of approval. <laughs> Let me know what books that are popular on BookTok you've loved. Maybe some, if you're on BookTok, some recommendations you've got from there. If you're not, which of these books are your favorite? I would love to know what you think of BookTok and the book selections that it gives out. I think it's very an interesting discussion to be had, but I think there's a lot of gems that they promote and a lot of books, like The Love Hypothesis, for example, really got its success from being so popular on BookTok and I think it was so deserving. So yeah, let me know all your thoughts down below. Thank you guys as much as always for watching like comment subscribe do all the youtube things if you like the video and i'll see you very soon in another one bye